You're actually very, because right now you're very, very like. <sighs> now? Yeah, right now you are. Now, yes, because this is Easter. <laughs> but uh, in life, I think a lot of expressions coming through me. So mm. uh, I want to do a lot of things and feel a lot of things, you know, rolling. <laughs> you want to feel a lot of things. Yes. You love feeling? Well, very like it. Yes. You? We don't talk about you. <laughs> yeah, I love you feeling like? as well. I mean, I live from feeling everything I do. Yeah. I say approach women because this is the way for me to get your attention. But what I really mean is go meet that potential lover. When you start having this way of seeing, this actual way of seeing, you can now speak to women with your heart engaged. Hello. Do you do ballet? Sorry? Do you do ballet? No. Because you have very strong fucking looking legs. <laughs> And I was like, she either works out or does ballet. Uh -huh. No, I, I um, did some um, fitness, you know, mm -hmm. but in a dance, but just uh, in young age. But I'm, I'm um, how shall I put it? I don't know. Uh, winner, you know, um, but at a young age, okay. dance, stage. You do like competitions? Because you said winner. <laughs> did you say winner? I am um, competition. Yes. Competition, yes. Yeah. And who are you waiting for? When did you arrive? Um, a friend. This morning we arrived. And you? Three hours. Do you still dance? No, no, no acting. Oh, acting. Um, I was just walking through, and. I noticed that you look very, very ballet looking. Ba yeah, like uh, ballet looking. No. Disabled. Did you just say disabled? Disabled? Did, what did you just say? Disabled? I don't know what's this. Disabled? No, this is something else. Like very bad, actually. Yeah, it's, disabled is like if there's a part of your body that's like, instead of having a regular hand, you have like three fingers or something, or something like that. But you don't look disabled. You look all right. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, in the I think the first year at the University of Acting, mm -hmm. uh, it's near here, uh, we have a ballet class. But I was very bad at it. So I, I was uh, better than contemporary, contemporary dance. Oh, contemporary. Uh, free dance. Mm. It was uh, more comfortable for me. Uh, but it was a little bit, um, you know. Too structured. Yes. And then hard. I hard. Yeah, I've, I've been dancing for a very long time. Uh -huh. And my favorite style of dance is like free, free moving. Like, well, we call it all styles in hip hop. We call it like all styles, where you do any style you want. I've never been good at just doing one, one thing. Like choreography for me has always been the worst for me. Yes, for me too. <laughs> in every style, in acting too. Mm. So performing is better than um, doing the things. Everything. I my English is so poor. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. So you like things that are more free flowing than structure. Yes, absolutely. And why are you here? Just holiday. No, I live here. Really? Yeah. And dance here? No, I don't dance here, no. Well, sometimes when I'm like feeling like it, I'll put in headphones and go in the street and dance. But you do dance? I do, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. It's like something that's very, it makes me feel really fucking good. That's what it is. Uh -huh. cool. And uh, like theater here? Hmm? Theater here, like, you like? Do I like theater? Do theater sub, uh, watch? Do I watch theater? No. Mm. No. What about you? Do you I watch do. theater? Yes, I do and watch. 
Yes, but I, I do it. <laughs> More than do it, than watch. Hmm. Yes, I'm, I'm forced here. University fourth year? Yes. One more. So you're 22? Yes. Mm. Do you think you're going to do something in relation to something you studied? Or do you think you're going to do something else in life? Absolutely. Uh, I thought a lot about singing. Dance for me is good, yes. And singing too. So every... Uh, segment of the performing is good for me. Mm. Um, get air, <laughs> you know. When you don't do your stuff, you mm. do something else, it's good for me. So, so you're probably going to be a musical. Yes, I you did a musical in this year. In um, uh, not this city. Mm -hmm. City. Another city in Hungary. Yes, in the um, structure theater. In the, hmm. Every uh, city has a theater here, and uh, they they did the repertoire. You know, it's a uh, Russia stuff, hmm. but it's still here. Musical, dance play, child play, you know, and with the musical, and it was good. You enjoyed it? Yes, very. Uh, I learned a lot. <laughs> did you learn that musicals are the thing that you're probably going to do more than anything? Is that what you learned? No. What did you learn? More drama. More drama? Is that why you're so serene like this? Because your life is a lot of expression, so when you're, li when you're not there, you're like very chill when you go on the street? <laughs> you're actually very, because right now you're very, very like. <sighs> now? Yeah, right now you are. Now, yes, because this is Easter. <laughs> but uh, in life, I think a lot of expressions coming through me. So mm. uh, I want to do a lot of things and feel a lot of things, you know, rolling. <laughs> You want to feel a lot of things? Yes. You love feeling? Oh, I very like it. Yes. You? We don't talk about you. <laughs> yeah, I love you feeling like? as well. I mean, I live from feeling everything I do. And why are you live here? This is a great like place to go to other places from. Uh -huh. Like Hungary is like close to Germany, these places that I go to. Uh -huh. So that's why I live here. I don't work here. I actually travel and work. Mm -hmm. But yeah. This is why I live, and also, don't get me wrong, beautiful Budapest is very lovely, like the way it looks, I love it. It's great. Great to be here. I don't see you as being very dramatic, but I guess it's because right now you're not, you're just like, <laughs> and then you do like this. So I'm like, maybe she is, not showing a lot, she's showing a little bit, and then she's showing like this. And then she shows a little bit, and then she does like this. I see, yes. Because <laughs> yes. you don't want to show too much. Yes. I don't, I don't know what I want, <laughs> actually, in life. Um, sometimes I think this, this is the, uh, the moving um, after behind the... Ooh. <laughs> I don't know how shall I... <laughs> You're trying to say it in English. So, what move my um, doings, you know? Okay. What I, do. I don't know what I want in the moment. I think yes. But I guess right now, do you need to know? I think yes. Right now you do? Uh, I will met with a friend. No, but I'm saying right now, do you need to know what you want to do? Because you said like right now. Absolutely, I'd... yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, she's been waiting for you. <laughs> I know all that as you. <laughs> I know, I know. Hey. My name is Anthony. Hey. Oh my God. One of my one of my best friends, uh, Anthony. Uh, he's from America. And I'm from America. Oh my gosh. Yes, so I'm I'm funny mayor. 
<laughs> now you're like, like, you're, like oh god, you're like, oh my god, you're like my best friend, but just in a different <laughs> no, form. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I need to switch the language, you know, um, switch my brain. It's, mm. it's, okay, we're speaking we just English. Met. Oh, uh -huh. we just met, yes, we did. <laughs> and then, sir. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, and, and we're. Where are you dancing? No, I dance Everywhere. for like my love. <laughs> like it's my love, yeah. Like mm -hmm. I don't dance for like a company or anything. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you here for a vacation or, or are you working here? Do you remember? Yes, uh, he works here, mm -hmm. but uh, no, no, not, as a not dancer. work here, not as a but dancer. just live here and move in. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So you work in here not as a dancer? No, or? not as a dancer, no. Mm -hmm. That's just something I do. Like, let's say like if I'm feeling like it, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna put in some headphones, and then I go into like some street where it's like good space, because I need open space, and then I dance. <laughs> That's the type of dance that I love to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For 14 years, I've been doing it. So. Oh my God! Uh, how can I find you, Anthony? She can, my and then she will she will come back um, and Saturday or Saturday. Next Saturday. Next Saturday. Okay. So we can meet then. Yes, absolutely. Okay, that sounds good to mm -hmm. me. Well, come here. <laughs> you can hug me, yeah. You can, it's fine. Yes. Okay, nice to meet you. Okay, especially nice to meet you. you. But yes, you're wonderful. Nice to meet you. Thank okay, you. I'll see you. Bye bye. Every woman you speak to is a potential lover. I think what confuses a lot of guys is what confused me in the beginning. When it comes to leading with my heart or letting my heart lead me. They start to view women not as, oh, there's a woman, I want to go meet her. They start to view it as an approach. These words become a block. So it's not, you know, today I talked to five women, it's I did five approaches. Because there's a lot of technicality going on. And this very technicality is making him have distance in the beginning. Do you want this step? So, you need to start seeing what is actually happening. Every woman that you want to meet is, is for real a potential lover. I don't care if that lover is for one night, for a week, for three months, that is a potential lover. I was scared to first go out with this mentality. I was scared to first go out and actually see this in this way. Because I knew I wanted to and I knew that was true to me, but I was just scared because it seemed like it was weird in a way. It's like this weird thing for me to just go out there and just view women in this way. Because I was coming from, quote unquote, the mindset that I'm out here doing approaches and I'm meeting women. And it felt so distant all the time. But I didn't think anything of it. I thought it was just like, okay, you know, if I'm somebody going out there and meeting women, you know, women, they want to just, you know, have fun. They want to, and you know, enjoy a man's presence. I don't need to go out there and just be engaged in my heart in the beginning because maybe that'll lead to me becoming needy or something like this. But, which is what we'll talk about later, which is neediness in relation to engaging your heart and how it's taboo. But I felt like this is the right thing to do. This is the right way to go about this. The right way to go about this is to view this as an approach. To view this woman here as just the next approach. And I had to have courage to walk out of that. It was so difficult though. Because a part of me knew that I wanted to meet women in this way. But a part of me also felt like, will I be going backwards if I try to quote unquote engage my heart from the beginning? So I tell you that you need to start seeing actually what's happening. Every woman that you see is a potential lover, she is. 
Why do you think the way that I interact with women, it looks very different than every other guy out there? Why do you think that? It's because I'm coming from actuality. I see a woman and I feel like I want to meet that woman. I'm not, okay, there's another approach, okay, okay, maybe go up, okay, excuse me, you look like this. No, I don't do any of that. I used to because I thought that was the right way to do it. I thought that was the right way to go about the way of the streets. That's what I thought. Or this thing, or going to bookshop, or whatever. But then I started to really see. I went, okay, that girl is actually just, she's a potential lover to come into my life. That's what she is. And then seeing her, I must be willing to lead with what's true for me. But in many ways, I didn't want to. I didn't. But I knew that the only way for me to really go about this and really be with my heart when I'm meeting a woman is to <clears throat> see her in actuality that she is a potential lover to me. She is. And this is something that I would say could be very taboo to the community. They try to make it seem like sometimes that if you lead with your heart, you're going to get hurt. Or you're going to be in the same position that you were in before you got into the community. So, many guys are taught to just go out there and have this very disconnected, like, fun, oh, I'm having fun with the girl type of way. And they forget that leading with your heart or being led by your heart doesn't mean that neediness will be a result or quote unquote end up as a boyfriend, as a husband. It doesn't mean that. So let me get very clear with you. Sometime when a guy's thinking when it gets into this community that, you know what, if I go up and I engage with my heart, then I'm going to come across needy. Because that's what I used to do. I used to wear my heart on my sleeve or I used to and come up and just be so sold by the woman that my heart would be engaged and I would feel myself needing her. And let me clear that up. Someone who is needy is not engaged in the heart. This is very, under, some for you to understand. When someone is needy, they're not engaged in the heart. Neediness is of the mind. Neediness is believing that this person or this type of person has something that you don't have and that they give you something that you don't have. That's where neediness comes from. It's a belief that this person has something that you don't have. Or they can plead you in some way. Neediness is also wanting or needing, not wanting, needing the other person to validate something about you. So if someone believes that the other person validates that they are cool, interesting, a wonderful person, if they feel like that person is the one that validates them about them, they will need them. Neediness comes from needing something outside yourself so yourself can feel okay. That's simply what it is. Needing something outside yourself so a part of yourself can feel okay. That's simply what it is. That is somebody's judgment, somebody's good words, it doesn't matter. It's something of this sort. It is far away from the heart. Guys believe like, you know what? When I was needed with my last girl, it was because I was just so leading with my heart. It was because I wore my heart on my sleeve. It's because I was caring too much. 
it's because I was being so nice. Uh, they think for all that was of the heart. That's what they think. I was caring so much. My heart was just all there. But I have to tell anyone who says that, or even you, if you felt like you cared too much or you were too nice, that's not actually of the heart. That's actually outside the heart. Because you were being nice and caring too much so you can get something in return. Manipulation and the heart has nothing to do with each other. They're opposites. Manipulation is the fear. So it's opposite of being engaged in the heart. This, they try to make it seem like it's this taboo thing to go up and just lead with this is what I feel and I'm expressing that and being gentle and sweet and soft and these elements of it, they try to make it seem like it's so taboo. Like if you lead with that, the woman is going to get a bad impression off you, like you can't have fun or all these things like this. Or they try to take you to the extreme, like you're probably, she's probably going to see you as a boyfriend. And that's the furthest away from the truth. The furthest away. Leading with your heart doesn't mean that the woman will see you as a boyfriend. Leading with your heart doesn't mean that the woman will see you as somebody that she can't have sex with for one night. Well, there's some girls who actually get the wrong impression from it, which we're going to talk about later. But yes, when you lead with your heart, you're leading with you. This is something I start to have to understand is that, yes, it sounds taboo. It sounds like something you shouldn't be doing. But if you really think about it, it's the only way to really operate. Let it sound taboo. Let it. I had to let it sound taboo. I had to let myself feel like this is something I shouldn't be doing, but also something I know that I feel I want to do. Because I'm not someone who is needy. This became like a fear of mine. I'm like, I don't want to be needy. Yeah, I can meet women, but I don't want to come across, if, like, if I'm leading within my heart, I don't want to come across that way. I don't want to come across like she thinks that I'm trying to be her boyfriend and you know, that I care too much. I don't want to come across that way. But then I went, it's the only, com it's the only way to come across, really. I need to let a woman feel that this is too much. Or I also need to let a woman feel that this is amazing. These are the two worlds I have to walk into. Is that by leading with my heart, because this is the way when you guys see me talk to women, this is the way that I'm doing it. By leading with my heart, I have that I should actually go into them being weirded out by it and feeling like it's too much and that I'm trying to make them into a girlfriend or them feeling like I've never had this before. It's the two extremes I have to, 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 to work with. And it's the only extremes to work with, really. It's the extreme of her feeling like this is weird and maybe you know he's trying to make me into something that I don't want to do. Or the other thing of, wow, I can't believe that this is actually an opportunity. I didn't know that this was available. That was the other part that I had to also get used to. So what I did was, I said, you know what? I'm going to lead with what I want to lead with. I'm someone who loves being sweet. I'm someone who enjoys that, pro that part of it. I'm not just someone that's like, let's go here, here, bend over. That's, that's one aspect of me. But the other aspect of me is very gentle. It loves to take a woman out. It loves to tell her things, look in her eyes for long periods of time. I have these ways about me, I do. And I enjoy that process of being with someone, which is the process of being with someone. You have the aspects that are on the two ends of wild. Wildly showing sweetness and, and gentleness and, 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 and this soft element. And the other aspect is 
being crazy, grabbing her, being dominant, fucking pulling her by the hair, these things. That's the other aspect of it. But they both are the wild aspect of love though. That's what they are. So I know that if I wanted to express this wild aspect on both ends, I must be willing to do that when I meet a woman. Not just later on. Because that was always what it was like for me. Like it was easy for me to do that when I knew the woman came into my life. But starting out in that way, I felt like it was just too much. Just way too much. I'm like, I'm starting out in the same way and I'm treating this woman in the same way that I'm treating someone else that I'm with for a long period of time. And it was scary. Absolutely it was. I was like, I'm willing to walk through the taboo way because I feel like it's true to me. I know that I'm not needy. I had this, like, this, fear, this, fear got, this fear got built out of nowhere. Like, I don't want to be perceived as needy by caring too much. But I was like, I do care. Why do I have to fake like I don't care right now when I actually do? By listening to so many different things in the community, it actually pulled me away from being engaged in my heart. So I tell you this, if you feel like there's things in the community that's pulling you away from really being engaged in your heart, stop listening to it. Just stop. Listen to those who give you the chance to truly engage with your heart. Because this is going to be the way you're going to be able to explore the wild aspects of love. Because love doesn't mean permanency. It means that's what is. That's what you are. When you're expressing that to a woman, she may feel like this is too much or wow, I've never encountered this. It may make her uncomfortable. Or I'll only encounter an element of this when I was with a guy in a relationship. So it can kind of send her sometimes backwards. Like this guy is probably trying to have me as a girlfriend and I don't want to be that. And that's why you must be willing to explore both extremes in yourself before you can go out there and actually just start doing it with a woman. Because you'll be like, Tony, I was just exploring the extreme of what it meant to be gentle and sweet, but I'm like, but you, you're also not balanced. She can't feel the part of you that's wildly on the other end. And that brings me to <laughs> some stories of some women who I had the pleasure of meeting, but who had two reactions to me. So if we had to start with the flaky ones, the ones who actually flaked because of me being like this. I remember I went on a date with this girl and she was so, I just, oh my God, like energetically, I could just remember. She just, I, I wanted her so much. We didn't have sex on the first date. And then on the second date, we met, we, she came over and we made spaghetti together. And we had this strong, strong sexual attraction. Strong, very, very strong. Then we start having sex. And as we're doing this, I just, it's just so fucking great. I mean, she squirts. We, we just have this amazing time together. We do. But then afterwards, as we're laying there in the bed, she just jumps up, runs, walks over, gets my, uh, my uh, long sleeve button up, and she puts it on, and she butts it up a little bit and just come lays back in the bed. And she was just so lovely through the things she was doing that I just start really treating her in a very lovely way. And as I was treating her like this, I could feel the part of her that was going this feels like it's too much. <laughs> I could feel that part of her. And of course, this was in the beginning when I was really like learning to really sit in that space. But a part of me was becoming like, oh my God, am I doing too much? And from her feeling that, she didn't see me again. So that was someone who felt like what I was doing was too much and they felt like they were going into a, a zone they didn't want to be in. But she's not the only one. I was in Barcelona. As I'm in Barcelona, um, I go on this double date. And there was this girl and I like the way her eyes was and it was just like, I just had the great liberty to meet women through my time who were fucking just 
amazing because I bring that out of women. But as she <clears throat> is there looking at me, I'm just like, oh my God, I want her. And I, I kiss her and then I start getting her into this zone of feeling sexy as a woman before we get into bed. So I have her saying things to herself uh, before we get into the cab. And as we're in a cab, we go to the place and then of course we start having sex and she's just amazing, of course, in bed. Then we have this point where she goes, where after, after sex, I'm in, the, I'm in the bedroom and I'm dancing around because that's something I do. When I'm feeling the music, I start dancing because it's something I love. And she just went, why do you think women love you? Because she knew that I was somebody who could get a lot of women. And I said, because I actually care. And it was like, oh, she had that reaction to it. Then the next morning, as I'm walking her back, we're crossing the road and me being very aware, I saw the car was coming and I just put, I just put my hand out very quick. Like the thing that a boyfriend would do, like if he was protecting this girl from something, I put my hand out very quick. Then we had these other moments where I would do something and it seemed very boyfriend-like to her. Because remember, I'm leading with my heart and they have the choice to actually receive it and go, this guy is actually showing me something or to go, this is weird, he wants to, me to be something I don't want to be. So continuing on, um, I tried to see her the next day, she didn't want to meet up. Months later, she wrote me and said, hey, I'm watching this uh, track meet and I see you look like the sprinter. And I go, yeah, why you say that? She's like, because he's hot. And of course I knew she's wanting to get my attention. So we start talking and I tell her that I'm gonna come see her in the UK. But the girl that I show love with now, I wind up getting with her and I wind up just losing interest in all of the girls. That's just what happened. And then she wrote me sometime again, was like, hey, I'm still waiting on you to come visit me. And I said, hey, I'm with somebody right now. And she's like, oh, okay. But she didn't want to see me again because she thought that I was someone who was just like really sweet or like someone who was maybe trying to become very attached to her. I could feel that from her. But she was surprised by the fact that with that element, I also had the element of freedom. I had the element of not being attached, which is something women are not used to. They're not used to a man being so engaged, really, really engaged, like sweetly engaged, but also being totally free at the same time. I mean, this is the potency of what it means to be the, that kind of man, because you now represent both sides of life the side where you're totally engaged and sweet and with your heart and wildly on both ends and you're totally free means like you're unattached to the situation. But then I bring you to the girls who were amazed by it, which is all the girls who I've gotten with from the point that I've decided that. Let's think about this girl who is from I forgot where she's from, but it's in the Balkans. She's from one of the Balkans, or Bosnia. She's from Bosnia and... We met. I was out at night, we met. And then, as I'm, t as I'm walking her home, we actually got into like this semi-argument in a way. Because I'm willing to just, of course, express whatever I feel with a woman. So we got into like this semi-thing where she's just like, where's my friend? I'm just like, stop. You keep, and we just actually got into this thing where many people would be like, whoa, what the fuck? You just met. And then we meet for the first date and I tell her that she looks like a lesbian and that she should change her clothes because it was just really bad. I'm like, you look like a lesbian. You need to change your clothes. Your body, your body, you have a great body. Like, let men see your body. Let your body be seen. And as we're together, the way that I'm expressing myself to her, she just feels like she's becoming more open and more open to the point where one day we were sitting down and I just went, come on, let's go in the store. Because I really wanted her to feel beautiful because she wasn't just used to like showing her body and stuff. So we went into the shop and I was like, you know what? If I pay basically 80% of this, you could pay the others 20% and you can wear these heels because I know you're going to look fucking great in these heels. So I'll pay 80% of it. And she did. Now, of course, when hungry, the heels didn't cost a lot. So I want guys thinking like, you pay for some heels? No, they didn't cost a lot. They didn't, but I knew they were gonna look great on her. They did. 
And she's actually in one of my, my videos. I can't remember which one. She's in one of my videos. I can't remember which one. And she's in her heels and these short shorts. And I was just, she just would come up to me some days and be like, you know, I was out today and I saw people looking at me and I was just like feeling good. She would feel like that. She went from a woman who was afraid of showing her body to a woman who wasn't afraid and was like, I'm so happy that you showed me that. Because I made her become more of a woman. I did. I expressed everything I wanted to express to her when I was with her. On our very first date, I said to her, she was talking about these people. I said, when you're with me, you don't talk about people. She's like, okay. And through that whole time we're, we're together, I just kept that on. I would treat her really sweetly. We would do things. I would go out with her. And she, was just, she just felt wonderful. And then when she was leaving, she didn't want to leave. She had to go back to a guy that was, who was back home. She, was, she didn't want to leave. And even when she left, she was writing me almost every day. A woman that was just amazed, really, that I can have both of these. Then you have the girl that I took home, and the very last girl I took home. And she said to me, even before we got home, I feel like I'm going to miss you already. Or I feel like, no, I feel like I miss you already. That's what she said. The whole night we're together, she just... She led everything, really, because she was just so, like, bowled over by me. She just led everything. She was like, let's get out of here. Let's go do this. And, and I was just tagging along with her, and I was just like, she just feels bowled over. I'm going to let her do this. And then that one night, she was like, she, you know, she's going through her thing of, you know, I don't want to, you know, make a bad decision. This was before it came to sex. I don't want to make a bad decision because I don't want to, you know, get hurt because I've been hurt before. And I knew she was going to say that because I could see the whole way we were, when we were interacting that she was somebody who's been hurt. So I was like, it's fine, just uh, let's hang out, but I'm still gonna give you a massage, I am. And the story goes on and she's just like, well, what can I give you? Because at the time she wasn't thinking of sex. She was like, so what can I give you? And I was just like, openness, that's it. And that night went for her in such an amazing way where she got treated so wonderfully that she started researching me afterwards and I saw on the street and she was just like, oh, I didn't know you do this thing where you take girls home and this, this, and this. And she's like, did you, you, didn't, you didn't film me, did you? And I was like, no, I didn't, I didn't. But she was just that amazed that she started looking, she started researching me after we had sex. Like, we, we, I didn't continue it on. I didn't give her my Facebook, I didn't give her anything. She just knew my first name. And somehow she found me by like how people research, I don't know. But the way she felt that night, I just remember her, like, after she squirted, like, for the third time, she's just, like, looking at me with these big eyes, like, wow. Like, it, it was this thing about her. And I'm so used to saying that because, of course, most women don't experience that, but yes. And that brings me to my last story, because now this is, like, story time. It's with a girl in Melbourne, and I don't know if she's going to watch this video. She tends to watch my videos, but... She just felt more open after meeting me. I remember one time, we're in the bed. It's the last time we had sex before I left. We're in bed and I'm having sex with her. And as I'm having sex with her, even before that actually, I was in the bedroom and I just looked there and I just went, you're beautiful. And she just was like, <sighs> and she's literally almost start crying. She's like, you just said with so much conviction. And I remember we're in a bedroom and I'm having sex with her and I just look in her in the eyes while we're having sex and I just go, I'm gonna miss you. And she's just like, really? And she almost, she's going into crying and she's just like, what am I crying for? She just didn't know that that was a possibility. She didn't. She didn't know that you can have these extremes of wild when it comes to love. She didn't know that. She didn't know that you can have one, this experience that's not even permanent and have something that's the most life-changing experience for you as a woman. She didn't know that. Just like the woman who I took home, she didn't know that in one night she could feel like, but even before we had sex, I miss you already. She said that to me. And this is what I'm telling you, is that when you lead with your heart, 
women can start to feel things like this. They do. It is not the wrong thing, it is the only thing. And when you're leading with your heart, you really do start to see that every single woman that you want to meet is a potential lover. This is what you start to see for real. I thank you so much for tuning in to this video and giving me the chance to just express to you something that I operate from. Because you're probably wondering, you know, like when you're speaking to women, what are you operating from? I'm leading with my heart. I am. I'm not needy. No, I'm not. I don't, no woman can give me something I don't already have. Of course, she can give me her femininity, her, her, her unique femininity or uh, her sexuality, her unique sexuality, but she can't give me anything I don't already have, simply. I have a free Meet the Bedroom series. Everything from what do you say on approach to what do you say going to the bedroom? Like how do you, when she's in front of your house, how do you get her upstairs? The only thing I left out is the texting because I'm not gonna teach you that. You would have to come see me. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching before my website comes out, please email me at TonySolo at TheEssenceOfMen.com. It'll be down in the description box so you can be able to copy and paste it. Subscribe and share this with anyone who you feel will need to hear this. And like I always say, who you are is valuable for that which you want in life and in relation to women. It's just realizing.